All right. Uh, we'll talk about that a little more later. Uh, but uh, what about this uh, problem? This last problem, I want everybody to, to please do this. What is the nominal moment capacity for the beam? The beam we've been just talking about, we found the strain in the concrete, we found the strain in the steel. Could you calculate the nominal moment? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to, to do that. Go back and look at the note, your notes and uh, see if you can calculate the nominal moment. All right. What do you think, guys? Caleb, what do you think? Jacqueline, Jacqueline says uh, uh, 225 foot caps. And she's absolutely correct. OK? So if you do this problem, uh, you should come up with 225 uh, foot caps. And here it is. Here's the answer. And just in case you didn't come up with that value, uh, here is the answer. But if you didn't come up with that value, please go back and review it. It's very straightforward. Now, one other concept that I want to cover uh, here uh, in terms of moment capacity of concrete is if you look at your notes, the next item number five, the terms that I said in the beginning you should learn, the fifth term was ultimate moment capacity. All right? So the ultimate moment capacity, we're going to cover that here. All right? Now, the ultimate moment capacity is the amount of moment that the designer would allow the structure or the element to be exposed to. What we covered before, when we, what we called nominal moment, nominal moment is also called theoretical ultimate moment. So the theoretical ultimate moment is what the, the material in the cross-section can provide us. However, to bring in some factor of safety, the designers would like to reduce the exposure of the building to the amount of load. So instead of allowing the building or the member to be exposed to the theoretical ultimate moment, or the nominal moment, as we called it, they calculate what they call the ultimate moment capacity and use that in their equations. All right, now, obviously, tell me, would you want this ultimate moment to be less or higher than the theoretical moment? Yeah, absolutely. You want it to be lower. So take a look at the very bottom of this page. When we calculate, when we calculate the nominal moment, as we did, you know, Jacqueline just said 225.27 foot caps. We calculate that, and then we multiply it by a, uh, what we call a strength reduction factor. Strength reduction factor. All right, so we reduce it, and by doing so, we are introducing some uh, level of safety, some factor of safety. So this ultimate uh, or the strength reduction factor is less than 1. And we use the, the phi, the letter phi, to identify it. And sometimes we refer to it as the phi factor for obvious reasons. Now, you may ask, is the phi factor always 0.9? No, it is not. It is 0.9 if the element that we're looking at is a beam, all right? Now here, this slide shows, uh, this slide shows uh, some of the things that I just described to you. However, what I 
need to do is bring to your attention the bottom, this very bottom line, the very last line. It says fee varies from 0.9 for beams to 0.65 for columns. All right? So the fee factor varies. And this is all dictated by the design code. And if it is a beam, it's 0.9. But if it's a column, it's 0.65. It's a higher reduction because columns are much more uh, critical elements than beams are. All right? Uh, and I believe there it is. The next slide, slide number 31. Uh, here I've given you the fee factor for various elements. And sometimes, guys, it could just be this question. What is the fee factor for... Uh, for, a, for bearing on concrete. And again, once again, if you know what they're talking about, you would know where to look it up very quickly. All right? So just tag this page. Uh, sometimes this is the question itself, or this is part of uh, the problem that you have to solve. Ultimate moment, moment capacity here uh, is just a summary in words, summary of what I have already discussed with you. The only thing I want you to look at is the, at the bottom of this page. In that box, I am telling you row. This is row. It simply is called the steel ratio. It is the ratio or the amount of steel that you have in the section compared to the overall dimension of the concrete. So here, rho is equal to A sub S, the total area of steel divided by B times D. Remember, B is the width. D, pay very close attention, D is the distance from the compression side only to where the steel is. All right? Uh, we're going to skip this page. This is a problem. This is very important. Um, it reviews some of the concepts that I've presented to you, but also it uh, introduces you to loads and codes. Loads, actually, the concept of co uh, loads, definitely you need to be familiar with it if you take the structures uh, exam in the afternoon. But to some degree, and I will show you to, to some level, um, you need to uh, be familiar with it for the morning exam as well. All right? So they give you a beam. This is actually pretty close to the kinds of problems you might see. Um, the span length from support to support is 30 feet, and it carries a live load of 418.5, live load of 418.5 pounds per linear foot. Make a note of it pounds per linear foot this is, all right? Now, is the strength adequate? All right, um, ACI, this is, the, this is the load equation. In this case, we need to uh, use the load equation because we are considering live load and dead load. Those of you who are not familiar with this concept, I will tell you very quickly. There are two loads that are applied to a uh, uh, structural element. One is uh, live load, which is transient. Uh, you know, if the building that you uh, work in, for example, uh, when the, the people who work in it, when they are there, it's a limited time. And when they leave, they're no longer, the building is not subjected to those loads. So that's live load. Uh, dead load, however, is the load that's sustained throughout the, uh, the, the life of the structure. And uh, definitely uh, one big part of a dead load is um, the materials themselves, the, the structural materials themselves. So um, here, the equation is 1.2 times dead load plus 1.6 times live load. These are load factors, 1.2 and 1.6. Think about it. 
what we're doing, this is really adding some safety level. Um, it, when you add, when you calculate the actual dead load and multiply it by 1.2, what you're really doing are you're adding 20% to the actual dead load. With a live load, when you multiply by 1.6, you're adding 60% more to the actual live load. We, we have a higher uh, load factor for live loads because they are less predictable than dead loads are. Let's move on. Uh, here is, I want you to follow this uh, uh, calculation. And I will tell you, this is a comprehensive uh, problem, what we are solving right now. On the test, however, every step, each step that I'm showing you could be a problem by itself. All right? So they say the reinforcing bar is, uh, th they are, there are three, three number eights. All right? And then uh, the yield, steel, yield of steel is 40,000 PSI. Compressive strength of the concrete is 4,000 PSI, and it's normal weight. And these are the dimensions of the cross-section. Please make a note that B is the width. D is what we've talked about, the depth from compression side to where the steel is. And then what they say T. T is 19 inches, but that, that is the total depth. Uh, sometimes they use that T, H, uh, whatever they call it, it doesn't matter. That is the total depth. All right? Now. Let's calculate the dead load of the beam. Here, I've done something that may confuse you, but please pay attention because I'm going to tell you, write this down. These numbers, 0.833 and 1.5833, those guys, those are the dimensions of the cross section in feet. All right? There it is. B is 10 inches, T is 19. If you uh, mu uh, multiply those by 12, these are the numbers that you get. And we're calculating the entire cross-section. In, in other words, we are using what we call T, or the overall depth. Why? Because we want to know exactly how much concrete we have in, in this section. Why? Because we're calculating the dead load of the beam. How much does this concrete beam weigh? All right? So the dimensions, again, in terms of feet, we're multiplying, multiplying it by 150. Who can remember what, why 150? We talked about this earlier in this presentation. All right? Remember when I said normal weight concrete weighs somewhere between 145 PCF, pounds per cubic feet? somewhere between 140 and 150, or 155. Here, we're using 150. Now, you may ask, on the test, what should we use? Well, if you use the, the, the answer, the tolerance of the answer will be such that if you use anywhere from 140 to 150, you would get their target value. All right? So in this case, we multiply that, and you, you get the dead, load, the dead load of the beam is 198. Uh, pounds per linear foot, and the live load was given to be 418 pounds per linear foot. That actually was given, all right? Uh, we calculate the moment at the mid-span, WL squared over 8. Those of you who are structural engineers, you recognize this, and those of you who, who are not, you could look that up in the steel design manual or Yes, I said steel design manual because the moment diagram would be the same no matter what the material. Or you can use the principles that I showed you to draw the moment diagram and get that. All right? So in this case, uh, you find the design load. We took the dead load multiplied by 1.2, and we took the live load multiplied by 1.6. I introduced those load factors to you in, in the previous slide. And there it is. M required is 113 foot kips. All right? 
so this this beam is is safe and then 